All right, so we are going to look at how to manipulate Excel via PowerShell. And I just want to preface this by saying that if you have an already open instance of Excel, this isn't going to work. You have to open up Excel and the workbooks and things that you want to manipulate programmatically through this process. So close Excel. If you already have it open, we will see how to open it and manipulate it through this video. So first we need to create an Excel com object that will give us access to the com interface of the Excel application and let us manipulate everything. We do that with the new object commandlet. We specify the com object uh, parameter and then we give it the Excel.application name over here. We assign it to a variable and then this Excel object will be what we use to interface with it through the rest of this script. So we can't see Excel right now. We want to be able to see it so that we know what we're manipulating and, and we can verify it visually. We do that with the visible parameter. We're going to set it to true. And when I run this, you'll see that Excel pops right up. And so now we can see everything that is happening. Another thing that we want to do is set the display alerts to false. And the display alerts are those messages and warnings that you'll get. For instance, if you try to delete a workbook, it'll say, or if you try to delete a worksheet, a sheet, it'll say, are you sure you want to delete this? Well, if we're doing things programmatically, we want to disable those so that they don't prevent the script from being able to continue. So we set the display alerts to false. Now let's talk a little bit about the structure of Excel real quick. Excel is kind of like a bookcase. And then under that, you have workbooks, which you can put on your Excel bookcase. So Excel, it, the application itself is the bookcase. Then you have these workbooks, which are kind of like actual books. And then inside each of those books, you have worksheets or pages. And the worksheets in Excel have cells which you can manipulate and organize information and data in the same way that the pages in a book uh, have paragraphs and sentences to organize letters and charts and things like that. So it's, it's very similar to a bookshelf with books that are workbooks and then uh, pages in those books are worksheets and then cells are kind of like your uh, sentence structure and your your information organization. So right now we're going to look at how to manipulate the books on our shelf. Now let's say that we want to add a book to our shelf. We do that by calling our Excel object. Then we use the workbooks property and that workbooks property has a method called add and this lets us add books onto our bookshelf. So when I run it, you'll see that we have book one. If I run it again, it'll add book two. So now we have multiple books on our bookshelf and that is how you can add those workbooks. If we wanna see a list of the names of the workbooks, we could run excel.workbooks and we'll see all the, the different objects. Each of these is its own individual object and you'll see that they have many properties associated with them and one of those properties is the name property so by filtering the information provided from those objects we can select only the name and display all of the names that we have on our shelf very easily we have book one book two and book three so we have the names there we see that we have multiple book objects on our shelf what if we want to work with one of those workbooks. We have to be able to focus our attention on it. You can see right now our attention is on book three. So we could manipulate book three. What if we wanted to manipulate book two? Well, we once again book, go back to Excel workbooks property and it has another method called item. An item lets you select a index or it lets you access the index of all the workbooks that are in your Excel at the moment, or at least in, in this instance that we have created. So we're gonna select the second workbook 
in that index. Now, you may be thinking of PowerShell arrays and how they start at zero. Their index starts at zero and then goes one, two, three. So the, uh, the first object in a, a, in a PowerShell array is zero. But with this item index, the first object starts with one. So if you want the second object, you specify two. And in this case, we are gonna activate book number two. So we're selecting the second book and then we're calling the method attached to item, which will activate it and give us the focus of book two. So now our focus is on book two. So we can start doing things with book two. Now we don't just have to use the index. If we know the name of the book, we can also provide a string of the name and do the same thing. You'll see that we have activated book one. So now our focus is on book one. So I made another little, little bit of code here that will just randomly activate a book. Every time we run it, a random book is activated. Let's talk real quick about how that's working. This is actually the exact same thing up here. The only thing that we've changed is inside of the parentheses of the item method. So inside the parentheses, we have added this bit right here, which is get random. And the get random commandlet will let you select a random set of something. In this case, we're selecting a random number between a minimum and a maximum. So we've set the minimum to one because that's where our index for the item method starts. The max we've, select, we've selected to be the count of the number of workbooks. And that's how we can quickly see what, what the number of workbooks are. There's three workbooks. But the way that the max works for get random is that it always, it, it limits you to one less than what you have set it as. So for instance, if you've set the minimum to one and the maximum to 10, it's not ever gonna select 10. It will only select between one through nine. So that's why we have this plus one here. The count gives us the exact count of workbooks. And if we use that, then we will never get the third workbook in this instance. So if we add one, the max will be four and it will select one through three and we'll, we will be able to cycle through all of the workbooks. So that's just a little aside in my um, getting a random workbook bit of code there. So workbooks, these exist logically in, in memory. They're not saved to the hard drive. If you've ever seen an Excel file, an Excel file is just a workbook. So if we wanna open up that workbook into this Microsoft Excel instance, we can utilize the workbooks.open method. And we supply it a file name. And when we run it, I have one that's on my desktop already. And you'll see that it has now opened Mr. PowerScripts.xlsx. And that is the title of our book. So when we go back and we select all the names, give me all the names of the workbooks. Now we have a fourth one, Mr. PowerScripts over there. So when you're working with workbooks, maybe you've opened some and you want to, you want to get rid of them from your, your bookshelf. You're not necessarily getting, you're just destroying them. You're just removing them from the shelf of, of the books that you're working with we would use the close method. So Excel workbooks, you have to select one of them and then you call the close method on that workbook. So this is gonna select the first workbook in, um, in the index. And I'm guessing that's gonna be book one. So we should see book one disappear on the left over here when I run this. And you'll see that book one has disappeared. If I run this again, then it will remove book two because now book two is in the first index slot. We can also close them by their name as well. So I have Mr. PowerScripts open, open here. If I provide it that string, then we can close that one as well. So when you're working with workbooks, maybe you've manipulated a workbook and you want to retain the 
uh, changes that you've made to it, since this only exists um, in the memory, it's not it's not saved to the hard drive. We have to be able to we have to save it first before it will you know it'll it'll be retained. So we can call the save as, or I believe there's save as well. If you've already opened one, you can just hit use save um, to save it. But we're going to save as a different file on the desktop. And we're going to save the first workbook in our index here. So when I run this, you'll notice that book two has changed because it was the first one in the index. And it is now the, the title of the book has now changed. So that is a little bit of working with the workbooks. And that is that that is the the books on our shelf. Now we are going to look at how to work with the pages in one of the books. So you've worked with workbooks. Now you want to work with the pages in the books. And you'll see that we have the pages here. They're called worksheets. We have sheet one sheet two, sheet three. And that is the reason we talked about activating or focusing a workbook. So these manipulations that you make with these bits of code for worksheets will occur on the active workbook. So for instance, the same way that we could add a workbook to our bookshelf, we can add a page to our workbook. So instead of using workbook, we're using worksheet and we're, we're calling the add method. So just to show you the difference in focus, I have clicked on this one. It is now in focus. When I run this code, you'll see that it adds a sheet to it. If I click on this one and bring it to the forefront and run the same code, it now adds a sheet to this one. So that is why being able to activate or uh, bring a workbook into focus is important before you start manipulating the worksheets. So we can do the same thing that we did with workbooks. If we want to see all the names of the worksheets that are in a workbook, we can run very similar code. We just change the workbooks to worksheets, run it, and we can see all the worksheet names in there. Now, unlike the workbooks, we can actually change the name of worksheets. The workbook titles are the file name. So if we want to change those titles, we have to change the name of the file. But with the worksheets, we can just change the name outright. So by selecting the, we're going to select the first item in the, uh, in the workbook that is active. And we're going to change its name by calling the not dot name property. And we're going to give it this string that I've typed up here and you'll see down below that it has changed immediately as soon as we run the code. We can also select worksheets by name the same way that we can with workbooks and change their name that way as well. So I'm changing the name once again down below as you can see. And you can activate worksheets in the same way that you can activate workbook workbooks and then you can manipulate those uh, those sub objects or the cells and everything inside of that worksheet once it has become active. So we're going to activate the second worksheet in this workbook. And we can also activate it by name as well. So I've activated sheet three. Now here's the same code that we did for workbooks that will just simply select a random worksheet in the current workbook. Nothing special there. So you would close a workbook, but in a worksheet, you delete it. So instead of the close method, we have the delete method. This is going to delete the first item in the index and we're going to run it. What happened here? It's thinking. It's thinking. Oh, did I run? Did I run? I may not have run. That's exactly why we need to run this. I don't think I ran this bit of code. So I've run the display alerts false. 
and let's see if it happens again. You'll notice that it was waiting for me to click on the Excel application to display the message. So when I run this again, now you see that it deletes it immediately without me having to click on the application to select, to confirm that I want to delete it. And now we only have one sheet left. And I think we need to add some more in order for me to delete by name. So we can quickly add some more and then we'll go back down here and we can also delete by its name. So I've deleted sheet three. We get an error message because there is no more sheet three. So once we've done everything that we want to do with our workbook workbooks and worksheets, then we want to close everything down. But we have to clean the environment that we've been working with because if we just close everything out, you'll see what happens in a second. We're going to close all of the workbooks that we have open. All right, so our bookshelf is clean. And then we're going to quit out of Excel and we're going to move the, the, the bookshelf out of the way so that we can do other things. And you'll see that it's gone. When we check and see after we've quit, you'll notice that there is still an Excel process running in the background. So we have to finish cleaning everything up by removing that process. So we pipeline it to stop process and this will stop all of the Excel processes that are running. And it's also good to add the dash force on the end. So we run that, clears up any Excel processes running in the background. And then we need to release the com object. So we put our object that was created in the inside of system.runtime.interoptservices.marshall with its static method release com object. And when we run it, you'll see that our object is now down to zero. So it, it means that it doesn't exist anymore. And when garbage collection occurs next, the memory that it was using will be freed up for other purposes. And that's it. Thanks for watching.